the affinity scamming and um, by association. And if you get some pump and dump, which is a tried and true way to try to extract money from losers, uh, whether it's in a casino or right. elsewhere, you know, this is like another version of that. So it has this market like uh, the NFT market, which you, I don't know if you remember that even yeah. two years ago. Um, and they it was a pump and dump for about 18 months. And they this company called Ocean, somebody or other or something is great to see open sea with a bunch of NFTs and like they're all of them have dropped 95, 98, 99 percent. That's like basically it was just a pump and dump. This is another pump and dump. It's just they're trying to affiliate scam Bitcoin, you know, to make it look like there's something because all these other things are just now everything against Bitcoin goes to zero. And same thing with Ether. So uh, this is just the latest version of, of, a, of a scam. On a long enough timeline, everything goes to zero against Bitcoin. This doesn't just include fiat currency, but also other cryptocurrencies. At this point, Bitcoin is unstoppable. This is the latest message out from Max Kaiser. Recently, Max and Stacy spoke on why Bitcoin is the ultimate cryptocurrency. Max shared his thoughts on how Bitcoin will play out in 2024 and he gave his predictions for the market. Max also broke down his view on Ethereum and other altcoins, exploring the dynamic landscape of digital assets beyond Bitcoin. He highlighted the challenges of navigating bull markets compared to bear markets, emphasizing the importance of resilience and conviction in the face of volatility. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Max reveals the key mistake Bitcoiners will inevitably make during the bull market. Also guys, if you want to stay most up to date on the crypto world, I send out a daily 5 minute crypto newsletter that covers expert predictions, on chain data breakdowns and breaking news all for free. Click the first link in the description, enter your email and join over 50,000 others to become a better crypto investor right now. Now here's Max Kaiser why he thinks everything is going to zero against Bitcoin. Successful people have to, they cop to their mistakes and try to figure out why they made a mistake and how do I do better. The people who are not successful tend to be like pretend like they never made the mistake. They yeah. want you to ignore that mistake and they just do the same mistake over and over again uh, and expect different results. Right. And uh, I think also on this 2017 period, 2016 period, which was the explosion of the scam of that era, the ICO initial coin offering. This is when and turning down all these deals, you know, millions and millions of dollars to do all these deals. They had to say no. Uh, this was the beginning of Bitcoin maximalism for me because mm. it was at that point that I decided to, you know what, you know, we're going to go down this path of Bitcoin only, Bitcoin maximalism, and try to develop a brand that is Bitcoin maximalism. What does that brand mean? And so then in 2020, when Michael Saylor appeared, he became the poster child really for Bitcoin maximalism. But it, I think it, it, it percolated up. I mean, the cypherpunks were always maximalist in their in their own way. Uh, but and then 20, 2017, 2016, like we started to hew toward maximalism. And then I think Michael Saylor kind of coined the playbook for maximalism from 2020 going going forward. Uh, I think that's how that that kind of uh, codified. Because I know how they work. I know yeah. how the IMF, like we talked about it. They, they centralized. They centralized. It's, it's centralized, therefore vulnerable. And to Stacey's point about being a nation state and here in El Salvador, the maximalism, you know, then into El Salvador became natural for the country to adopt the maximalist position as well, because it dovetails perfectly with the president and what he stands for, his idea of economic liberty. And also the calculation was made that Bitcoin maximalism, the benefits far, far away, a 10,000 to one, any possible incremental gain by entertaining any shitcoin whatsoever yeah. cannot and possibly add any. So ordinals are basically similar. Like there are people who are attaching or vandalizing or attaching graffiti or what have you to Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And because Bitcoin's immortal and because Bitcoin is a beautiful piece of art that'll last for the rest of time, you know, they are by association feel like they are um, somehow sharing in the spotlight of Bitcoin. And uh, also these people who throw soup at the Mona Lisa, they have some kind of cause. Like they say, you know, right. we're protecting the environment or we're protecting, you know, the right, some some activist rights. Sure. And same thing with ordinals people, they, they believe that they're doing something that's so socially responsible. Um, I forget exactly what they're trying to do, but or say that they're doing, but they have some philosophical message behind it that even Aristotle- would There's throw. a comedic one too. They pretend they're funny. They really, really think they're funny. And if you go see them, like they put on a wizard costume and go up on stage and, and say they're funny. And you're like, okay, okay, wow. uh, this is not funny. But yeah. um, uh, Jimmy Song just wrote about 
this. Yeah. And he compared it to MasterCoin, which, you know, it's just a age old trick, right? Let's explain so, what an ordinal is first. Just uh, for, I don't think so. Because no, it's just a JPEG. It defies explanation. Just, oh, it's like just why he's on this. It's just it's like garbage. That's okay. It. It, it's layer. It's not even as simple as a JPEG. It's like a JPEG, but worse, like a degraded, a virtual reality AI version of it, and um, very complicated. Uh, basically, you pay like a Bitcoin for one sat. Okay. And that, wow, I mean, it's that's funny, right? It's <laughs> kind of funny that you can find yeah. like hundreds of people that willing to do that. It's like, you know, it's like Times Square in the 70s or 80s, right? You can see some wacky things that tourists do. Show world, so it's like you you're you're scamming <laughs> Bitcoin tourists, right? You're selling them, yeah. you're, you know, you're taking two Bitcoin for them and giving them one sat and they're like, <laughs> and um, that's it. So, but we had something back in 20, like 12 or 13 called MasterCoin and they did a thing, or maybe it was a little bit later, but they raised a whole bunch of Bitcoin and introduced this layer uh, called MasterCoin, and basically they never built anything because that's the incentive model. That's the thing about Bitcoin, right? Is uh, the incentive model is what keeps the whole system running. If you give somebody, you know, here you here's Jeff Bezos level money for your idea of building Amazon. <laughs> would Jeff Bezos have built Amazon, or would Elon Musk have built SpaceX, Tesla, and all that stuff? If you said, "Here's three hundred billion," he would have been like. Mm, especially as a young guy, you're maybe like, well, I'm just going to go be a playboy around I'm the good. world. I'm right? good. Right? Thank you. I'll be in Vegas. Yeah. Going to and see Danny Gans. that's pretty much what always happens with those tokens that are do a pre-sale. And so MasterCoin became an embarrassment and they renamed it Omni. But that is like just this week. It's just like they're turning it off, essentially. It's, it's over. Oh, it's finally turning it off. Yeah, basically. Oh. Because the only thing it was still used for was uh, some tether. But that's, that's gone. There's, uh, you know, it's... It, that's basically what we're seeing with the ordinals. It's just a second layer. They're trying to promote a second layer. They're trying to pretend they're comedians. <laughs> and, um, you know, they're like a woman comedian, basically, what Max is saying. <laughs> it's, the, it's the latest scam, essentially. And But I, I like my, you know, it's, uh, it's like vandalism, you know, in that regard. But I'm, like, thinking about it, when I think about it, in those, in those in trying to come up with something, you know, this is kind of what I come up with. Uh, but at the bottom of the whole cesspool of it's, it doesn't mean it's worthless, stupid shit that will be forgotten soon and replaced with another scam. Like the scams keep coming. They just rename them. They give them a different name. Like Jimmy Song was saying, this is just mass master coin with a different kind of. Uh, yeah. This is going to be this cycle though, because, um, okay. The thing is the U S regulatory agencies and Department of Justice are all over anybody who creates one of these tokens now, right? So what they're doing instead is launching layer two on Bitcoin. They're using the name of Bitcoin because that's the only one that everybody in the world, even Wall Street, figured it out that it's just Bitcoin. Bitcoin is where all that Bitcoin is something special. And they might not understand Wall Street, you know, Larry Fink might not understand why Bitcoin is special, but uh, he knows that's the one to sell. The yeah. Ether was the coin that with the NFTs that they were attaching the shit to because yeah. Ether still had a has still had a life. It still would look like it might be something. But yeah. now that it's just dropping like a stone against Bitcoin, mm -hmm. all the scammers have migrated from ETH to Bitcoin. So a lot of some of the bigger shit coins like this one called Tron has just announced that they're moving on to Bitcoin. So they're layer two on Bitcoin. So this is going to be this this cycle as when Bitcoin gets to 60,000, 70,000, 80,000, 100,000, 125,000, as it climbs up that parabolic ladder, you're going to see crazier and crazier stuff being offered on there. Max's yo-yos, like the Duncan will probably start offering yo-yos on the blockchain, you know, <laughs> on the Bitcoin blockchain in particular. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what you're going to see next. And it will work. It's, yeah. it's comedy in a way. People will continue to give a Bitcoin for one sat and not – be able to add up the math. Well, that's what Stacy says. The, the bear markets are difficult, but the bull markets are more difficult. That's what when with El Salvador, what the Bitcoin office does and what you know Max and I have been doing here for this whole time is that's one of the things we do is we try to convince 
the best and brightest to come adopt El Salvador as their headquarters, their home, their spiritual home, their real home, their physical home um, to move here, to, to come here. And the thing that we benefit from is that we have been around forever. Like we're old, we're, <laughs> we've been in Bitcoin since 2011. So we know the people who are, you know, smart enough, intelligent enough, good businessmen, agile enough to survive the bear markets. And those are pretty brutal. Um, but more importantly, have survived like four or five of the bull markets because that's the hardest. That's actually more difficult to survive in Bitcoin than than the bear markets. How so? Because you're uh, if you're a big name, if you're if you are in any of those, you get tempted to be a scammer. Mm. Like you're offered. The 2017 one was pretty crazy. I mean, we received daily four or five offers to Max. Max was, you know, this is before Sailor and all these big Wall Street names and stuff like that. There weren't that many huge names, famous names in Bitcoin. And Max was certainly super famous back then in, in terms of, uh, you know, recognition, name recognition. So people were offering like a thousand ETH or like huge numbers to promote all and they were really like you don't have to do a single thing all we need wow. is your name on our website and if you have a photo of you and they were offering a lot of money and we know a lot of people who took that offer and you know none of them are around anymore none of them in in bitcoin space uh you know individually i guess some could work their way back if they are humble enough and uh you know admit their wrongdoing or whatever but the higher up you go, whether it's corporation or certainly a nation state, and that's why we do what we do is because you can't make that kind of mistake as a nation state, right? Like so there's Max Kaiser with his unwavering confidence in Bitcoin's transformative power and Stacey Herbert adding depth to their insightful conversation. Their discussion reveals the resilience of Bitcoin against external influences like ETFs, reaffirming its unstoppable trajectory. As they delve into topics like Bitcoin maximalism, Ethereum, altcoins, and the challenges of bull markets, Max and Stacey provide valuable perspectives on the evolving landscape of crypto. In conclusion, Max and Stacey's discussion serves as a reminder of Bitcoin's enduring strength and its role as a catalyst for change in the financial world. Their insights inspire confidence in the future of crypto, leaving us eager to witness the continued evolution of this transformative technology. Before we go, a quick reminder for those who are keen on staying updated in the fast-paced world of crypto and Bitcoin. Consider subscribing to our daily 5-minute crypto newsletter. It's a concise resource for the latest expert predictions, breaking news, and top on-chain analysis trusted by over 50,000 subscribers for insightful crypto investment information. Hit the first link in the description to join our community and elevate your crypto investment knowledge today. Anyway guys, hope you all enjoyed today's video and that provided you with some value. I'll see you all on the next one and as always, all the best.